Hi, boys and girls. Happy Thursday. It's H day in our Bethlehem Children's School countdown. So I have a whole bunch of H books for you. I even wrote some of the H words down. Be listening for happy hair. There's my hair. It looks a little bit like a bunny, but it has extra long ears, so it's called a hair, starting with H. Hood, hmm, I wonder what book that will be. Hungry, I wonder what book that will be. Our very great friend in the Sprouts Room's name starts with H, Hunter. Hi, Hunter, happy H day. Hug and Hound. Are you ready? Our first book is Little Red Riding Hood. There it is, H-O-O-D. Here we go. Grandma's sick in bed, Little Red Riding Hood's mother said. Will you take this basket of food to her? Make sure you stay on the path. There's a big bad wolf in the forest. I can't see any wolves, thought Little Red Riding Hood as she set off. Hi, H for hi. Little Red Riding Hood skipped along and saw some pretty flowers. Grandma would like those, she thought, and so she wandered off the path to pick them. Oh dear, what do you spy right there? Hello, little girl, growled a voice. It was the big bad wolf. He used an H word, hello. What are you doing, he asked. Picking flowers for grandma, said Little Red Riding Hood. The wolf grinned, how nice, he said, using another H word, how. Why not pick those flowers too? Then he slunk away. Once she had picked a pretty posy, Little Red Riding Hood followed the path to Grandma's house. Also starts with H. Little did she know, but the wolf had gotten there before her. When Little Red Riding Hood arrived, she knocked and went inside. Hello, Grandma, it's me, Little Red Riding Hood called as she put the basket on the table. I'm in bed. Come through, dear, said a rather gruff voice. Little Red Riding Hood went into the bedroom. What big ears you have, Grandma, said Little Red Riding Hood in surprise. All the better to hear you with, came the reply. What big eyes you have, said Little Red Riding Hood. All the better to see you with came the reply. What big teeth you have, said Little Red Riding Hood. All the better to eat you with, came the reply. In a flash, the wolf leaped out of the bed and swallowed Little Red Riding Hood whole. Then he waddled out of the house with a full belly. You can peek inside his belly to make sure Little Red Riding Hood is all right. Let me out, me too. Hello, Grandma. Did the wolf swallow you too? Yes, he did. A woodcutter was passing by and heard the cries for help. Two more H words, heard and help. The woodcutter ran over and cut open the wolf's belly. Out sprang Grandma and Little Red Riding Hood. Grandma sewed up the wolf's belly with stones inside. That will teach you not to eat people, she said. They sent the wolf on his way, and they never, ever saw him again. Goodbye, said the woodcutter. The end. So I guess that you need to remember, stay on the path, friends. The next book we have is called A Hare 
a hound and shy mousy brown. A hound is another word for a dog. This book is by Julia Hooberry, oh, another H word, and Jonathan Bentley. Here we go. There's a hare in the air. There's a hound on the ground. And watching them both is shy Mousy Brown from his hole in the wall, not making a sound. So nobody knows that he's there. There's the three main characters, the hare, the hound, shy Mousy Brown. The hare in the air is simply astounding, singing the spring in with whirling and bounding. Mousy Brown's heart, ooh, H word, goes pitter pat pounding with love for her daring and flair. Wondrously wild and fearlessly free, she jumps for the joy of just being she. How could I hope, hope? That she'd even see me, thinks poor Mousy Brown in despair. Despair is a fancy word for sadness. Look at Mousy Brown's down eyes and down eyebrows. The daft dizzy dancer goes laughing and leaping right up to the hound who pretends to be sleeping. But Mousy Brown knows that he's secretly keeping a watch on the hoppity hair. More H words, hoppity. For he knows this shy dog, he's seen him before. He'll lie there as still as a log till he's sure that the hair is in reach of his snappity jaws. Then he'll snatch her right out of the air. Ooh, look, he has down eyebrows also. Even though he's pretending to be sleeping, he's got bad plans. How can I warn her? I'm so very small, thinks shy Mousy Brown in his hole in the wall. He takes a deep breath and he leans out and bawls in his biggest, best bellow. Balls is another word for yells. Beware! That's a fancy word for look out! But the hare doesn't hear him. She pats the hound's nose, tweaks his old tail, and tickles his toes. Wake up, sleepy doggy, it's springtime, you knows, she whispers right into his ear. With a leap and a snap and a swipe of his paw, the hound on the ground isn't there anymore. He's up in the air and he's boxing the hare. With a thud and a thwack, she's pinned on her back and quakes at his menacing stare. Her beautiful eyes are shining with fear as he lashes a lick up her long, lovely ear. Gosh, you'll be ever so tasty, he sneers. He's about to eat hair. And Mousy Brown leaps from his lair, clutching a feather he hurls himself down right into the ear of the huge, hungry hound. Three H words in a row. And relentlessly tickles the hound into giggles until he's wound tight in a knot with his wiggles and can't move a whisker or hair. Also an H word for hair or fur. Then Mousy strides out with his feather held high. He feels like a warrior, tall as the sky. He bows to the hare with a bold twinkling eye and says, pleased to meet you, my dear. You saved me, the hare cries. I'll love you forever. You bold mouseketeer, so fearless and clever. Come with me now, let's go dancing together. We've got a whole springtime to share. Mousy Brown and the hare have full buckets. Mousy Brown and the hare make a curious pair and when they go dancing, the neighbors all stare. The hare doesn't notice, Mousy Brown doesn't care. And they'll never be parted. So there, and look, 
The hare's ears are making a shape. It's a heart. Heart starts with H. The next book we have is a favorite in the Sprout classroom. The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Hungry starts with H. You guys can probably read this right along with me because you know it so well. And oh, by the way, The Very Hungry Caterpillar is by Eric Carl. Here we go. Ooh, here starts with H. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one nice apple, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. On Thursday, that's today, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. That night, he had a stomach ache. Can you imagine eating all of that food? The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf and after that, he felt much better. Remember what's coming? Now he wasn't hungry anymore and he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He built a small house, H word, called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and he was a beautiful butterfly. The end. I love the butterfly picture in that book, Boys and Girls. I wonder what your favorite part is. Our last book is kind of a singing book and it has the word hug. I really wish I could hug all of my sprouts. It's called, If You're Groovy and You Know It, Hug a Friend by Eric Litwin. Oh, my golly tamale, look at that, there's a hair. Hmm. Here we go, sing it if you know it. If you're groovy and you know it, greet the day. If you're groovy and you know it, greet the day. If you're groovy and you know it, the things you do will show it. If you're groovy and you know it, greet the day. If you're groovy and you know it, go explore. If you're groovy and you know it, go explore. The squirrel sign says, follow me. If you're groovy and you know it, the things you do will show it. If you're groovy and you know it, go explore. And what is Groovy Jude Joe doing? He's helping a friend. Helping starts with H. If you're groovy and you know it, laugh and play. 
If you're groovy and you know it, laugh and play. If you're groovy and you know it, the things you do will show it. If you're groovy and you know it, laugh and play. If you're groovy and you know it, plant a seed. If you're groovy and you know it, plant a seed. The squirrel sign says broccoli. If you're groovy and you know it, the things you do will show it. If you're groovy and you know it, plant a seed. It says community gardens, harvest day. Harvest is another H word. If you're groovy and you know it, read a book. That's what we're doing. If you're groovy and you know it, read a book. Look at the hairs. If you're groovy and you know it, the things you do will show it. If you're groovy and you know it, read a book. And remember what the hairs say? We're all ears. Funny joke. If you're groovy and you know it, sing your song. If you're groovy and you know it, sing your song. If you're groovy and you know it, the things you do will show it. If you're groovy and you know it, sing your song. And there's some frogs. They start with F. That was a few days ago. If you're groovy and you know it, hug a friend. If you're groovy and you know it, hug a friend. If you're groovy and you know it, the things you do will show it. If you're groovy and you know it, hug a friend. I can't wait to hug you guys again. Groovy Joe wants to know what makes your day groovy. I hope you enjoyed our books, friends. See you tomorrow for A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, Day on Friday. Love you. Bye.